<laughs> okay, this um, last few months, I have just been on a roll with storytelling. Beverly has given me an opportunity to share some of those. So I'm going to wrap things up with a couple of those stories. And one of them is called Santa Babies. <clears throat> In my defense, and I know I need one, I never understood the idea of sitting on Santa's lap and reciting the list of things I wanted for Christmas. In my family, you get what mother says you get. I'm born in January, so the next December, at the budding age of 11 months old, my mother took me on what was to be our bi-yearly outing to what she called the old folks' home. Every Christmas at Easter, we took plates of cookies to the Senior Living Center and listened. I loved it. And I was unnatural at drawing out conversation from even the most challenging people. What was Christmas like when you were five? What did you get your wife for Christmas? Things like that. So at four years old, when I made my first trip to a department store and saw Santa sitting in the middle of the store while a toddler sat on his lap, I was in a complete dither. A clerk said, Debbie, the children are all telling Santa what they want for Christmas. I was baffled by the concept and infuriated that infants were sitting on Santa's lap. Never, I resolved to myself, will I ever sit on Santa's lap. And I didn't until college. <laughs> this particular year, all the sorority and fraternity chairwomen and men were gathered, are gathered to plan the family celebration. <clears throat> Folks in need bring their children and enter the ballroom. Turkeys and hams are handed out to the parents while the children stand in line to sit on Santa's lap. Jeremy is selected to play Santa Claus. I have a tremendous crush on Jeremy. I volunteered to play the part of Mrs. Claus so that if anybody's gonna sit on Santa's lap, it's gonna be me. <laughs> the day arrives. Toys are everywhere. Festive co-eds hand out food and smile. We have carolers. We have popular fraternity boys dressed as white bushy-tailed reindeer. We have trees and lights and snow, and I am Jeremy's wife for the day. <laughs> on the negative side, the Chamber of Commerce has insisted that I wear the traditional Mrs. Claus garb, unflattering skirt, hair in a bun with a satin hairnet, an oversized fake fur trim jacket, and granny spectacles. <laughs> I pose on Jeremy's lap for the photos. It is perfect. Jeremy will see that I'm the one. He'll be smitten by the fake wedding rings that we are wearing. He'll, he'll look at all those layers of costumes we are wearing, and he will fantasize about unbuttoning each piece. You get the picture. <laughs> then she comes, Mrs. Weinzel and tells me that I am to stand at the greeting line away from Santa and guide the children to Santa's elves who will, be, who will take them to Jeremy. Fine, I think. He'll see me acting all precious with these kiddos and it will give him ideas for the future. <laughs> Here come the families, smiling faces of adorable children and gracious parents. I'm in love with these people, but not nearly as much as I'm in love with Jeremy. Hello, I smile to the darlings as they bustle up to the line. I chat with the children, I see Mrs. Weinzel in the far distance, escorting girls dressed in green. Those must be Santa's elves. Merry Christmas, I smile to the faces. Come stand by me and tell me all about yourself. Oh, hell no! The elves are sorority girls dressed in green fishnet hose, velvet bustiers, spiked heels, little green jackets, big hair, and adorable little elf hats. Santa's elves don't come dressed up like skid row hookers. <laughs> I am livid, but still I smile. I'm distracted by the charming children, but only between fumes that are billowing out my ears, in rage directed at these elves, these interlopers into my fantasy of Jeremy, these nympho tarts bending over dramatically to place unsuspecting babies on Jeremy's lap. Hey, little darling, what are your dreams for Christmas? Not that I care what their dreams are. What about my dreams? What about my picket ivy covered fence with Jeremy? The day drags into night. The lights flicker, indicating the end of the event. And the elves and I watch, arm in arm, sadly, as Jeremy leaves with one of the fraternity boys in his bushy tail right here. Oh. So that's how that went. Oh. Cut to 25 years later. I'm at lunch with my girlfriends and we are laughing. I mean, like funniest joke ever laughing. And I don't pay any attention to the call out, Mrs. Claus, Mrs. Claus. In a flash, I look up and see the 30-year-old faces of three people. I knew it was you, Mrs. Claus. I'd know that laugh anywhere, the beautiful young woman says. You were Mrs. Claus when our family came to the celebration, the young man adds. Oh, wow, 
I'm taken aback. <laughs> you changed our lives. Do you remember me? I'm Maria, and my brother Andrew and my sister Elvia. Yes, I think so. I try so hard to remember. We were so embarrassed about, well, about life, but you said we were welcome, and you had a special place saved for us in line. I said that to all the children, but okay. <laughs> and I was so scared to tell you about my hopes and dreams, Andrew Glissens, but you looked at me like you really cared, and so I told you that I wanted to be a fireman. And you remember what you said? I have absolutely no idea. You told me that the world would be in a better place if I was protecting people from fires, and I do. Now I'm in line to be fire chief. I said that? Me, the little snob who only thought of herself and her fantasy men? And when I cried because I didn't want to sit on Santa's lap, Elvia chirps, you told me I didn't have to do anything I didn't feel comfortable doing, that I could just shake Santa's hand and talk to him. The lightning of that moment struck me. I, who was a bottomless pit of phantasmagorical need for attention, had found a way with the help of a little Santa magic to give these children what they needed most, my attention. Aww.